One of the components that is most important to me in my work deals with what I refer to as the physicality of the paint. The act of mark making, the choice of a palette, the choice of tools to make the work, the size, the scale of the work, all those things uh, are interesting to me in regard to the decisions that, that um, come into play. But the, the physical presence of, of the sheer material the substance of paint is part of, uh, for me, part of the romance of the studio. I'm working almost exclusively in oil paint. So to be working with uh, that very old material, those substances, um, and the kinds of uh, mediums that go along with that, whether you know, turpentine and, and linseed oil and sand oil and, and, and an array of other materials, the aroma, the smells of the studio, from the, uh, the, the physical uh, accoutrement that goes along with that is, uh, again, part of the mystique uh, of the process of painting for me. Uh, I've lived in, in the southern United States the majority of my life, and, um, and I've been in Louisiana for over 30 years, so that continues to have uh, an interesting sometimes surprising influence on the work. I think most noticeably, um, even though when you look at my work, one does not think of it as, uh, in any conventional sense, as related to the landscape, but, uh, but the environment is definitely a part of the work, whether it has to do with heat or the, the influence of water or, uh, or rain. Uh, several years ago, um, a body of work that was made in 2006 called The Grammar of Water was very much influenced by, by this region, by, uh, by the atmosphere, again, uh, uh, thinking about water as, as a catalyst, whether it's something as simple as, for example, uh, the pond that's between uh, our studio and home, uh, or, or juxtaposed with something that was far more monumental, for example, Hurricane Katrina, and the, the extraordinary impact that that had on the Gulf Coast. The idea of influence is very interesting. For me, it, because it's a resource that I very often use, that is to say, I'm very conscious that I have been looking at, for example, Rembrandt's Bather, and uh, that I'm interested in somehow responding to the idea of light or water or the idea of bathing. So what is it that I take from that painting? What do I extract? How is that information filtered through my own poetic sensibilities? And then ultimately, what sort of visual poem do I make, or that it is important to make at this particular point in time? Some of the work in recent years ha has, been, uh, has evolved out of series. This is not necessarily a, a conscious decision on the front end. Uh, it's generally a more uh, intuitive decision in the terms of how one painting moves into another and uh, the, the ways in which one can resolve one formal issue and, and another it emerges. So that you begin to realize this is one solution to build in a painting, but there is another way to do this, or I need to investigate another alternative. There are, there are plenty of times where I will simply make one work in response to uh, an experience, uh, a, a literary reference, an observation. Uh, perhaps an object serves as a catalyst for a single painting, and then I will continue and, uh, that uh, and move in different directions. The, um, the use of text, the written word in my work, has, uh, has emerged off and on for a variety of years. Uh, two bodies of work that I've, I've recently uh, taken on. One is the Baudelaire sketches in reference to the French poet Charles Baudelaire. And um, the other is called the Cardinalis sketches, which really using the root word of cardinal, which of course has multiple associations, whether we think of uh, theology or uh, the bird or uh, a very wide range of associations. I'm interested in the, the multidisciplinary nature of language and how that begins to open up possibilities in making a painting. 
In speaking of collecting objects that I choose to live with, some of which find their way into assemblage works, the, the act of, of bringing something into the studio, it may be something that uh, a fellow artist gives me, that uh, is a gift from my wife, from someone else, uh, and the attachment to that, whether I find it, whether it is a gift, it's very interesting how you live with this for a while and how these objects begin to have their own language. They may well be, and in most cases, they are utilitarian. For example, a number of years ago, my wife gave me a 1910 Corona typewriter as a birthday present, a beautiful object. Uh, in fact, uh, that particular object uh, I incorporated into uh, one of the first paintings that I made in response to a, a poem by Charles Baudelaire. Uh, it was called The Desire to Paint. And I was interested in the conversation, the correlation between this object of, of this beautiful typewriter. Clearly, when we look at it, it's, it's an antiquated form. And yet, uh, the, the, the visual beauty of this object, the keys, the color, the blacks, the whites, the red of the ribbon in the typewriter, um, and then juxtapose in reference to Baudelaire, uh, who is writing a poem about the creative process, the desire to paint. Here is a writer speaking about his desire to deal with a language of pigment uh, or a visual language when he himself is a master of, of, of verse. It's a very interesting desire. Uh, the skills that we do not possess, the things that we would like to possess. And so that, that dynamic, that dilemma, really interested me. When I look around the studio now at a number of these paintings that um, uh, are in here, um, I think the layperson would approach these and think of them as very improvisational works, very gestural kinds of paintings, and that is true in part. But there's also an interesting process where there is a uh, a balance that I need to strike, or I, I find myself choosing to strike between intuition and deliberation. And I think the deliberation component emerges when I'm very much aware of a specific resource. In the right circumstances, the right place and time, there's a, a juxtaposition or some kind of correspondence that makes sense, that allows you to, to use that. And that's, um, that's something that I take a great deal of, of pleasure in, simply being still and being quiet and being open to the possibility of uh, these influences and the way in which they begin to merge and coalesce and um, come together.